Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Klausia, and I'll be present today uh, a topic about allyship and why we need you to power up the diversity on Apache and other open source communities. Uh, so, first thing of all, yeah, as I said, my name is Klausia. I'm a data engineer and data ops engineer at a company called iFi, and also I'm a committer of Apache Y Young Incubator. I'm autistic, so bear with me. I have difficulties speaking public, so I may sometimes get a little bit uh, forgotten words and all the stuff like that, but bear with me. I promise this is going to be nice. I'm also Brazilian. I'm a cough lover, and I have two dogs. I also wrote a book about data engineering, um, and this is intended for people who are getting to know about data engineering field, so we have basic knowledge about it, and it was very nice to produce, produce this book, but very hard, so <laughs> I'm just saying that. So, first thing I want to speak about before we start with the allyship thing is about what is DEI. DEI stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. So, what is diversity? Diversity is when we have groups of people from different kinds of different types of ethnicities, from different types of gender identification, sex orientations, from different types of socioeconomic classes, and so on. Equity is when we understand that not everybody is on the same level of opportunities, and we want to make a more fair and impartial uh, opportunities for those groups, understanding that we have struggles to get the opportunities. And inclusion is when we make the environment more uh, comfortable for everybody. So everybody can be their authentic selves, everybody can be their, what they really are, without being afraid of judgment or any other negative feelings. Um, oh, and I forgot to say, this presentation is also something is something that I want to bring like a talk with everybody. So if anybody wants to ask something during the presentation, feel free to ask. And speaking about minorities, what are the minorities we are talking about? Uh, as I mentioned before, are people that come from different types of, for example, religious faith, sexual identity or orientation, people who have visual or hearing impairments or physical disabilities, learning disabilities, neurodivergencies, and so on. Okay, but now that we have the minorities, why is it so important we have allyship? Actually, what's allyship? Allyship is when we have people from uh, privileged groups who stand up their voice with the people that are marginalized. So you stand up voice, for example, for a woman on your workspace to uh, so everybody can hear when she's speaking about something, or you can make the environment more inclusive for other people. But allyship has some key points that I'm going to speak here. The first one is about self-education. Is understanding is the first step to understanding that you have a privilege, and privilege comes from various forms, and as a continuous learning, it's. Uh, as I like to say, allyship is not is a journey, is not uh, a destination. So you understand that, for example, if you look around this convention, we have majority of men. So uh, why not make more women to join this event? Why not on your workspace calling more other women to join the the event, for example? Is about active listening. So when you listen about the struggles of those people, you get to understand why they have such difficulties. For example, if you hear that people with ADHD have a hard time to uh, stuck on the same uh, task for a long period, you can help them to uh, maybe set um, a milestone or a way they are going to work on the daily basis. So is understanding their difficulties, understanding their struggles on the daily basis and make it more uh, an environment more inclusive for them. The third one is about reflect, reflecting on the privilege. So yeah, you understand that you are on the majority group. How can I use that? How can I use this 
privilege as a positive, in a positive way. So I'm going to speak in a group, for example, again, I'm in an event, I'm a man, and I'm in an event where there's a lot of other men. Why not speak to the other man? Hey, next time we could call more women, we could, uh, on our workspace, call more women to join the event, for example. And why should we invest in allyship? I'm, I'm seeing a lot of fancy words here, I'm seeing a lot of nice stuff, but why should we invest on allyship by the end of the day? Because it empowers other people. You are helping other pe people to be heard, their voices to be heard. But you also are growing as a person because you are increasing your empathy. You understand different points of view. You are uh, getting sides for different ways of thinking to solve the same problem. And of course, you are creating a social change. You are creating a community strength. You are creating a resilience, a resilient community. And when I'm saying that, of course, I gave some examples of uh, workspaces, but I'm also speaking about community, the, the coding community. So uh, you're making your community more resilient. And okay, now that I got those, those, uh, those points, and I understand what a little bit what allyship is, uh, how can I put that as an action plan? What can I do effective, effective, effectively to do that? As I mentioned before, the first thing you can do is start the workspace inclusion. And here I put a workplace, but can be your coding community, can be your local community, can be any other, way, any other else. For example, you can promote on your community, on your event, or any other place that you're organizing, why not have a quiet room? Why not have a place where people with uh, neurodivergence can just, little, just decompress a little bit? Um, why not creating a PowerPoint template that will help people who have some kind of difficulties to see colors to understand better your template? Why not creating that? The second one you can do is about educational settings. We all have that one nephew or sibling that wants to join the software engineering team, that wants to be a software engineer or an astronaut or join the tech field, but she hears from the family that, okay, you should not do that because you're a woman. Everybody knows somebody who do that. And why not educating that little girl or that person who has, don't have the same opportunities to know you can do that. You can do that because several things you are capable of that. It's like educating. And also we speak about neurodivergency. Why not speaking to other people from, to your family, to your community, what is ADHD? What is autism spectrum disorder? And why those people need sometimes special needs or special support? is also about community involvement. So why not uh, creating, why not joining mentoring programs for young women who wants to join the technical field? Why not uh, spreading the world uh, on the local community? And online advocacy is about we can for example, imagine you're on a LinkedIn page. This is very simple. I know that sometimes it seems very, very simple, but it means a lot. When you publish something, you are somebody from one of those marginalized groups, and you publish something on your social media, speaking about something great that you knew, that you did, and somebody goes and share that. For people who are not in this kind of marginalized groups, it means a lot. So if you are in this position of privilege and you share the message about some accomplishment that the other people did, this, is, this means a lot. You're giving the voice. You're spreading the word. So as I said, it, means, it can be little for you, but for the other people are a great thing. So, now what? 
uh, I want to do something. I want, okay, I, hear, I heard you, Glaucia, speaking about the allyship, but I want to start something in Apache, for example. How can I do that? Well, and Apache needs you. We really need you because Apache, <laughs> because Apache has an initiative called Apache Diversity, which has the mission to build equi equity in our community and developing tools and frameworks to foster inclusion and increase diversity on all the Apache projects. So it's about to saying to the other Apache projects how they can make, how they can include more people, how they can welcome newcomers. Like for example, the last blog, the last post we did was how to create a good first issue for newcomers. Because we have the, sometimes we have the understanding that to be a committer, to be someone in Apache, you need to have like a high standard intelligence or you need to have like, I don't know, a PhD or something like that. When you can, if you're not comfortable with doing that with code, you can do that like no technical contributions, like documenting, social media, and so on. So the idea here was to create a good first, e good first issue for newcomers so they can feel more comfortable like starting the, the, the process on the Apache community. And of course, we have a lot of other things we, could like, we would like to explore, like understanding on Apache Flow how they are doing the good first uh, issues how they are working to build a more diverse community and what we can learn from other Apache projects, their struggles, and how we can include other people in that. And if you are also interested in your other types of, of Apache, uh, other Apache projects, we also have Sustain OSS, which I'm I'm also working on, and we are now working on a diversity handbook, which is a guideline for other communities to start a more inclusive and diverse uh, community. So we are building uh, resources, we are collecting resources, we are collecting uh, blog posts, we are collecting ways to make it more inclusive for everybody. And that means that means also for people with disabilities. So the example that I gave about the PowerPoint, uh, like creating a template with some guidance, some um, improvements for people who have, who have a disability of hearing or seeing um, is a way of start that we are doing it. So it's for yet, it's a small handbook, but we are working on that to make it bigger and to make it like a, a standard for the other community projects. And speaking about global initiatives, we also have the Hidden Disabilities and Purple Tuesday. The Hidden Disabilities is um, a global initiative that wants to, that wants to people who have a hidden disability, like a chronic pain, uh, autism spectrum disorder, uh, HDHD, for example, to be free to use a sunflower liner that identifies them as a chronic, as a people with a hidden disability that may need support. And the Purple Tuesday do almost the same thing, which is about uh, creating the how to create these environments more more inclusive for everybody. Uh, and speaking about PowerPoint. I know this presentation was really, really short. I just wanted to spread the message because I think it's all about spreading the message about what's allyship. This presentation was following the guidelines of the accessibility. So all the presentation is available for people who have some kind of hearing or visual disabilities, impairments. And uh, what I want to show here is that is sometimes we think that could be hard and we don't, we don't know how to do those things. But by the end of the day, simple actions can change a lot from other people, from other, perspe other perspectives of people. So thanks, everybody. If you have any questions, if you want to get a coffee and want to hear a little bit more about it or uh, just want to say something, I will be on the corridors, I will be around that, so thank you very much.